welcome to course galaxy hope you are doing good so today in this video i am going to discuss the questions which were shared by with you guys only that is on the comment sections and on the insta and the linkedin so we will discuss all of them today in this video and it might be possible that um, some of the questions might be missed by me or i have not seen them so if so you can share them again on the same video in the comment section and i will try to revert on them okay so if they are missed you can share with me again on the comment section okay so let's start with today's video so here is our first question by using soql can we fetch 45000 records of account and 10000 records of contact object so here what is happening uh, there is a query soql is done on the account object and in a query is done on the contact in which 45000 records are for the uh, uh, it is retrieving for the account and 10000 rows for the contact so here total rows count will be 55,000 as the inner query rows will also be counted in the total number of rows which will result in the uh, limit exceed of the SQL query that is we have only 50,000 records that we can fetch using the SQL queries. So here either it is related to inner queries or it is related to the uh, main object on which we are uh, making this SQL. So it will going to count total number of rows which are retrieved. So here if it exceed uh, 50,000 then we will obviously going to get an error. So in this case also as 5,000 records or rows are more so we will going to get an error. So the next question is how to assign 100 permission set to 100 users. Okay, so here I'm assuming that there are uh, 50, 100 might be same or the different permission sets and the 100 different users to which we have to assign. So this is there are the two ways. One is the obviously the hard one is the manual process. Manually we can assign to 100 different users the 100 permission sets and the second way is using the data lo loader so in this data loader we can have the two column that is one for the user id and the next second is for the permission set id okay and we can map them to the assigned id uh, in the salesforce and the permission set id so this is how we can achieve this requirement so using the data loader or either going with the manual process so the next question here comes is parent a parent b and child c so okay so there are so it is i think a junction object child c and it has two parent parent a and parent b write a sql query on child c to get at least two fields from the parent a and parent b okay so so yes this is possible we can achieve this when we make a sql query on uh, on this child object that is on the c so it has a master detail relationship with parent a and b so using the uh, relationship child relationship name and we can access the fields directly okay so let's suppose there is a account is the one of the master of this child c and if i want to access its field so i can directly account dot first name or so account dot name i can directly access so like this way we can access the fields from the sql queries uh, so the next question is the start method of batch class also runs only once then can't we call another batch from the start method so this is also a very good question as we know we uh, we cannot call our another next batch from the execute method but here uh, as the execute method runs number of times uh, depend upon the number of records how many chunks will be created so this much of uh, this many time it will going to call our batch class but here start and finish will going to calls once only in the transaction so uh, if we can call in the finish method so why in not on the start method so if you try to call another batch class from the start method also then also you will going to get the same error that is the that is we the which we will use to get from the execute method so salesforce will not allow you to call another batch from the start and the execute method only the solution is to call another batch classes either you can call it from the finish method or you can call it from the queable apex okay so these are the two ways from where you can call the next batch if you want to call in the start method also it will not allow you to call it will throw us an exception the next question is create a object car car services and car accessories okay so there are three object car car services and car accessories car service and car accessories are the child to car okay so here the master is car and it has two child object car service and car accessories 
Okay, so our final goal is write a trigger to update the fill on the car object total expense. Okay, so on the car we have the uh, fill total expense which will be total of the car accessories amount and the car service amount whenever new child is edited, inserted or deleted. Okay, so here uh, if I go as per the requirement, so here the car should be uh, in a relation so, so the car services and car accessories should be in a master detail relationship because if there is no car then there is no meaning of this car services and car uh, accessories so there must be the master detail relationship so if there is a master detail relationship exists between both so you can directly create a roll up summary on the car object where the amount fill sum will be calculated from the services and the amount filled services and amount of accessories will be calculated and roll up over the car object. So as per the business, as per the requirement, if we go, so logically they should be linked up with the master detail relationship. So we can directly go with the roll up summaries, but still if you want to create trigger on this, so uh, here is the link of this video, lookup video using, uh, so the same logic is uh, done here. You can apply the same logic on this objects also only you just need to change the name of the object so you can try this if it's still not able to do do let me know we will share a trigger on this requirement so the next is can we update value of formula field and the roll up summary field using the apex and the triggers no you cannot uh, uh, these fields are not the writable field so you cannot use them in your apex classes or the trigger these fields are dependent upon the other fields which you have used in them to calculate the formula and to calculate the roll up summary so these are not writable so we cannot use them and we cannot uh, edit them or we cannot update them so these are uh, only the fields which are used in these uh, roll up summaries and the formula fields can only be used in the triggers and the apex classes okay so the next is what is custom permission in salesforce why we use it if there is already profiles and the permission sets are there okay. so the custom permission yes we have custom permissions in the salesforce so if you write custom permission in the quick find box you will get uh, a name custom permission from where you can create them okay so so this is similar to the hierarchical custom setting one so so these custom permission are used to give the access to the users for specific applications or for specific uh, processes like automation or the validation rules as we used to do in this hierarchical custom settings so they are different with the profiles and the permission set like in the profiles and permission sets we have uh, we have like uh, objects, fields, video, apex classes, tabs, and also all these permission can be managed from the profiles and the permission sets. But what if I want to manage the permission for certain processes or certain automations for, for validation or for applications which we have created? So in this case, what we will do, we go for the custom permissions. Okay, in this, uh, we get the option to select the application in which we want to, uh, for which we want to provide the user access and the pro we can use them in the processes and in our automation and based on the user and the profile we can assign them so what we will do in this custom permission first we will create the custom permission and then we uh, have uh, we create the uh, permission set and to this permission set we used to assign this custom permission and this permission set then assigned to a user and we can uh, use them in uh, accordingly we use them in our uh, automations and the validations rules where we want to provide the access to the users okay so we will create uh, so i will upload another uh, separate video on this custom permission so uh, this is a good topic to know uh, which should be shared with you guys also so i will share this separately video on this explaining all how we can create them and how we use them okay so this is the custom permissions so the next question here comes how to check how many records are processed in the batch apex so this video will help you in answering this question so have a look hello so the question is i have a batch class and it is executed i want to know the number of uh, record ids uh, which are processed successfully so normally what happen our batch class executed in number of chunk depend upon the size of records so we are unable to retain the values from one chunk to another okay so to retain uh, and in our question we need something so that we can able to retain the value from one chunk to another then only we are able to collect the total ids which are processed successfully so 
there is an interface that is database dot stateful. So using this interface, we are able to retain the values from one chunk to another. Okay. So in our execute method, we will add a logic. We will create a list, and in this, we will add the IDs which are processed successfully. So first time when the chunk will execute, all the IDs will be collected here, and then the second time the chunk will execute. So this time, due to this interface. We are able to retain the values and more number of IDs will be collected in this list. So next question is how to process more than 50 millions of record using batch apex. Okay, so as we all know, the maximum records can be processed using the batch apex as the 50 million. And if you try to process more than this, then it will going to give you an exception. Your batch will be terminated and state status will be failed. Okay, but what if I have a requirement to process more than 50,000 records? So what we will do, we will create a checkbox. Okay. So first time when our batch run, we will going to process 50 million records. Okay. So, uh, and here we will going to put a filter on the query that where the checkbox is false, the records to be come in the query. Okay. And only the 50 million records will come here. Now in the execute method, what we will do on the backend, we will going to update this checkbox with as true. Okay, uh, in the backend, this checkbox is marked as true. Now in the finish method, we will again going to call this batch apex. And here again, when it will going to call, it will, in the query, it will going to, so it will going to retrieve the records where the checkbox is false. Okay, so now this time it will going to take, uh, it will going to take out all the left records which need to be processed. So this is how we can manage the process. So this is how we can process more than if the requirement is more than 50 million records. But at a time only 50 million records can be processed, not more than this. So using this, uh, you, again, you can call your batch for the second time to process the left, left records. So the next question here comes, if we have 700 records to update using trigger, then how many times trigger will going to run? Okay, so um, I, I don't know, my two guys knows that our triggers run in a batches of 200 records. So like suppose if you have 1000 records, if you have, a, if there is a trigger return on account and using this data loader, you have uploaded 1000 account records. So in this case, what will happen, the trigger will fire and in five batches that is in uh, batches of 200 records five batches will be created here because the trigger will always execute in 200 records at a time okay so if you have 700 records then it will going to call it will going to call four batches for this trigger to execute so four times your trigger will going to run so these are the few questions which are shared by you all. So if you have any queries related to this or any other questions or I have missed or any questions missed by me, you can share again on the comment section and we will uh, catch up again. I will try to share on the comment section and if it is complicated or I need to explain it more then I will create the video on same. Okay. So till then take care. Goodbye. We'll see you soon in the next video.